All right, well, thank you for enjoying me in this little drive in this uh, 2017 BMW i3. A really cool electric uh, vehicle that is great for people who want an electric vehicle that suffer from range anxiety because this has a range extender. Um, so it's a basically an electric vehicle. Uh, the i3 was built from the ground up to be an EV. It's not uh, a gas vehicle that was retrofitted to be an EV like some of the other electric vehicles out there. Um, usually when you take a gas vehicle and you convert it to an EV, uh, you know, they might look the same, but you know, a gas car and an electric vehicle, the way they're built and constructed are really completely different. So I think uh, there's a lot of deficiencies um, and a lot of, uh, a lot of detraction from you know, doing it that way. Um, in some ways it saves money when you can use an existing platform, but I think ultimately the product will suffer. Um, so yeah, so talking more about this uh, 2017 i3, this has a range extender. Um, so uh, BMW does make these things uh, that are completely electric and they offer uh, ones with a range extender. The range extender is a little, basically it's a two cylinder uh, motorcycle engine uh, that sits in the rear of the vehicle. Uh, when it's completely drained of uh, battery, the gas engine fires up and it acts like a generator. The gas engine is not connected to the wheels. Uh, it basically just acts like a generator and uh, gives the vehicle power to operate its electric motors and its accessories and stuff like that so you can get to your destination. Um, so you can see on here, we have a, a gauge for the gas tank. Um, probably maybe about 50, 60 miles is the range of the gas tank. It's not that big, it only holds about two and a half gallons of gas. And then uh, for EV range, when fully charged, right now we're under 50% and saying 37 miles. So probably about you know, 70, 80 miles depending on the driving conditions, uh, temperature and things like that. There's a lot of variables that can affect the EV range. Are you doing low speed driving, high speed driving, uh, highway driving, tends to suck more range out of EVs versus around the town driving, which is actually the opposite of gas vehicles. Generally gas vehicles are more efficient on the highway, but it seems to be the opposite with EVs. They seem to be more efficient in around the town driving. Um, so if you do more around the town driving than an EV is definitely a great choice. Um, and so basically uh, there's no range anxiety. Once you deplete the battery, you just go to a gas station and fill it up with gas. And um, I guess if you don't make it to your destination, uh, you know, after that, you just keep on topping off the gas tank until you get to your destination where you can charge it. Um, you can also fast charge these as well. Um, but if you don't have the patience to wait, you know, half hour, 45 minutes, an hour or so to fast charge it, um, you can just use the range extender. Um, and of course, if you uh, set up an appropriate charging overnight, you get a 220 outlet, you can get a full charge uh, overnight. So your house is like the gas station. Uh, I own an EV myself. I have a Tesla Model 3. And, uh, you know, my daily driving is about 30 miles. So if I own this i3, probably 90% of the time, 80, 90% of the time, I would just be under electric power and charging at home because uh, the electric battery has plenty of range for uh, daily use that I would use. Um, but I know people have range anxiety and they worry, oh, am, am I gonna have enough uh, you know, range to make it? And you know, sometimes that happens with a Tesla, but you know, the Tesla has a trip planner, uh, which uh, will you know, guide you to chargers um, if you don't have enough range to make it to your destination. But that's something that you won't have to worry about in this because you'll always be able to make it to your destination. You know, you might just have to top off the gas tank, you know, every, you know, 40 minutes or an hour or so, depending on the way you're driving. But I think for most people, uh, for daily use, you know, you're going to use the battery most of the time and you're not even going to dip into the gas engine. The gas engine is just kind of like a safety net or something to use on a road trip. This thing is completely, sl uh, completely smooth. Uh, no issue at all merging out of the highway. Uh, it actually accelerates pretty good. Uh, the electric motor makes about 170 horsepower and it sends power to the rear wheels only. Um, it's very quiet and comfortable and you have effortless thrust. You step on the gas and this thing takes right off. I would have no issue at all breaking the speed limit in this thing. This thing has plenty of plenty of guts and it's a, with its small size, it's a great vehicle for maneuvering in a city environment. It's actually almost like a magic trick how spacious it is on the inside. I'm six foot two, I have plenty of room in here. But if you look on the outside, it's a relatively small car. And you know, the back seats aren't that bad either. Um, 
and that's just kind of the pack packaging magic of this being built from the ground up as an EV. Um, so you're not, you know, you're not hand, you know, your hands aren't tied as far as you know space and construction goes versus basing something off of a uh, a gas vehicle platform. And um, as far as affordability for used EVs, uh, the i3s are really great. Um, you know, Teslas obviously are you know. Uh, a very popular EV brand you know I own a Tesla myself but Teslas are also pretty expensive and if you want a Tesla in the twenty thirty thousand dollar price range uh, you know often they have over a hundred thousand miles and they're pretty tired and quiet but just the opposite of this thing um, this thing is uh, in you know you, there are plenty of i3s including this in the twenty thirty thousand dollar price range a lot of them in the uh, you know in the low 20s um, you know some of them have higher miles even under twenty thousand we had one uh, an older uh, i3 with uh, about 80,000 miles on it, and I think that one was priced like around sixteen, seventeen thousand dollars. Um, but it was great. Um, uh, we've had enough i3s. Uh, you know, I'm the used car manager that I, I, I see these things to be pretty robust. They're pretty reliable. I don't see too many issues with them. I'm putting these through the service department, unlike you know maybe older gas-powered BMWs. Uh, you know, they can have a tendency to, you know, develop oil leaks or, you know, turbo issues when they get older. Uh, but the i3s seem to be very reliable. And that just goes back to the magic of uh, having an EV. Uh, you're having something uh, with far less moving parts. An electric motor and batteries is far simpler than an internal combustion engine. Now, obviously, this does have a little, you know, range extender engine, but that's not going to get anywhere as much use. Um, I think, you know, reliability should be pretty, pretty easy on the range extender. Um, and this thing is very smooth and solid. It's very refined. It is a BMW, so the fit and finish, the build quality is definitely up to BMW. And this thing, um, in some ways, uh, it is uh, more advanced than, uh, I'd say, Tesla's. A big part of is, is the unibody, uh, well, not, a big part of it is the way it's constructed. This thing has a really cool, uh, the whole body, the whole shell of the vehicle is uh, made of this carbon fiber composite material, so it's very light and it's very strong. Uh, the body is so light, in fact, that uh, two people could easily uh, lift up the body alone by themselves. Which, if it was made out of steel or you know aluminum, it wouldn't. You probably wouldn't be able to do something like that. Um, and that's why you know. So it's very strong. It's very safe for a small vehicle, and it's like I said, very spacious. You can see a lot of the material that they use is also uh, recyclable. Um, so if it ends up in the landfill, it's going to completely, uh, de you know, biodegrade and uh, not, you know, create a strain in the environment. Um, yeah, these are pretty reliable. Um, I mean, I guess uh, if I want to get nit nitpicky, uh, the issues I've seen develop is sometimes the buttons and stuff like the heated seats can be broken or sometimes these uh, LED lights can go out on these buttons. Uh, sometimes I can have to do with just having a, a, an older battery that needs to be replaced. Uh, we had a situation where the heated seat wasn't working and took it to BMW and they had to put a new uh, low voltage battery and it was like $600 and that fixed the problem. Um, this road's a little bit bumpy. Obviously it's a traffic revision, but this thing is handling it perfectly. You know, uh, it soaks up bumps, great. It's a very quiet and comfortable place to spend your commute. Navigation, great climate control system, audio system, very comfortable and supportive seats. Um, like I said, you know, if you're looking for a pruned EV and you don't want to break the bank, uh, the BMW i3 is definitely something to check out. And I guess new-wise, I mean, if you compare this to, uh, you know, a Tesla's or other, you know, fancy EVs, well, this thing was brand new. It wasn't cheap. I think the MSRP was like fifty, uh, fifty-five thousand dollars when this thing was brand new. Um, you know, that's as much as uh, you know Tesla Model Three. Uh, but on the pre-owned market, uh, they seem to be really awesome values. They're not anywhere. This thing's not priced anywhere near its uh, original uh, $55,000 price range, even though it's in pretty pretty nice shape and pretty clean. Well, there you have it. Uh, that pretty much takes care of our little spin in this BMW i3. I don't know if you're specifically looking at this one or information in one in general. Hopefully, it was informative. Uh, thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video, and maybe one day we'll see you visit our store. Have a great day, and thanks for watching.